Hi everybody, I'm Jen and I'm the Unapologetic Reader. I'm back today to do my Readorama wrap-up for round 7. This is not the first time I've done Readorama, but it is the first time that I have done so well. So if you want to see how well I did with this week's Readorama, stay tuned till the end and you'll find out. The first book that I read for Readorama was A Play of Shadows by Julie Sharnada. This was book two in the Turn of Light series. I read the first book a long time ago, but the story was still pretty fresh in my head. And right now this is just a duology, and I say right now, but it's been a few years, so I'm pretty sure this was the conclusion. I liked it. I thought it had a pretty good ending to everything. There were a couple of things dropped in there, like maybe this could continue on. If it did, I would definitely read more. I just love the world that Sharnita created. I love the town of Meridel. Um, I love the new characters that we met in here. I think we got a glimpse of how much bigger the world could be. I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to give away the first book, but if you really like big fantasy stories with lots of magic and a lot of mystery to it as well. I think you'd enjoy this series. I think she did a good job of taking the trope of the main character who doesn't know they're like the one or whatever and then finds out. She did a good job of taking that and telling a story about it in a new and fun way. The main character very much is kind of set up like the one in the first book and rather than saying well this can't be and this can't be she's really a character where yeah strange unusual magical things have been happening around her her whole life but she's like well that's just it that's just how life is and it takes other characters to go okay but the rest of the world is not like this and this actually has some pretty pivotal meanings for it so definitely recommend this one the next book i read was also book two in the series it was Shadows of Glass by Cassie Taylor. This is book two in the Ashes trilogy. This is a steampunk young adult dystopian novel. Again, I can't say too much about this book because it would really spoil how the first book ends. I will say that this book definitely struggled a little bit for me. I was a little disappointed. The synopsis on the back of the book leads you to believe that this is about one thing when really that thing does happen but it doesn't happen till like the last three pages of the book so I think because of that because I had read the sort of preview of what the book was about on the back the pacing felt really off throughout the book and I kind of felt like but the story is supposed to be about this other thing so when are we going to get to that and I feel like that was something that hindered me from enjoying this book for what it was. So if you do read this series, I would recommend that you just go into each book blind. Because after a few days went by and I thought about it, this wasn't a terrible story. But I think my enjoyment of it was tainted by the fact that I was expecting something else to happen that really took longer to happen. So what this book says it's about... I think probably happens in the third book and that's a shame because <laughs> I do love the characters in here uh, probably my favorite thing about this book was that in the first book the main character she makes a lot of impulsive rash decisions that affect a lot of people and I say this a lot in YA novels especially dystopian YA novels where you have sort of the hero or whatever you know they're making all these rest decisions it has a huge impact on a lot of people and sometimes they kind of get away with it in the story and then everyone's just like oh well it's okay because they're the leader cha -la -la. this book definitely calls the main character to task for that this starts off and everyone's having a really rough time there are very serious consequences to some of the rash decisions that the main character made and she has to sort of change and evolve and learn I can't always behave this way she has to grow as a person so that was really 
interesting to see. I hope it does continue into the next book. She also gets called to task for kind of running this little love triangle thing. You know, she's sort of leading these two characters on, which I got really frustrated with, even though I do see the problems as to how she could start to have feelings for somebody else, but she handled it really poorly. And rather than both of the guys being like, oh, whatever, okay with it, you know, they, they kind of call her out on it, which is definitely refreshing to see. So Cassie Taylor, I'm still very impressed with her writing. I think maybe the marketing on this book could have de been done a little bit better. And for the third book, which I do plan to read very soon, I'm not going to read the preview to that book. I'm just going to go into it blind because that's what I did with the first book and I did uh, really enjoy it. So I think I ended up giving this one like a three stars, maybe a four stars, but it, I didn't like it as much as the first book. The next book I read was a very solid five stars. That was Mechanica by Betsy Cornwell. This is a retelling of Cinderella. This is a sort of steampunk interpretation of Cinderella. Noticing a lot of steampunk things. I definitely went down the steampunk hole this week and I have no regrets at all. <laughs> so this was everything I wanted it to be. It sounded a little bit like it was going to take the concept of Cinder from the Lunar Chronicles and how she was a mechanic and it was going to focus more on that this has nothing to do with the Lunar Chronicles but that idea that was introduced in Lunar Chronicles with the Cinderella character I always felt like I wanted to see more of her being a mechanic totally different world not even trying to be like Lunar Chronicles or Cinder or anything but this one if you were looking for more of like well how does this girl learn all this mechanical stuff and you know what are these inventions that she makes you are going to get that in this book. This talks about how Nick or Nicolette, who is our Cinderella figure, how she sort of teaches herself to be this really incredible inventor. She's unlocking the secrets of her mother's secret laboratory under their house. That's not really a spoiler because you kind of find that out from page one. And all she wants is just to make this incredible invention, get a wealthy patron at this science exposium that's at the end of the year so that she can open her own shop and move out of the house she shares with the steps, her terrible step family, and basically make it on her own. She is not motivated at all by meeting the prince or, you know, getting married or finding true love or anything like that. She really just wants to be independently not really wealthy but able to take care of herself this is very empowering I think for female care females to read I just can't say enough about it there's this tiny little mechanical horse that's animated and I mean he just steals your heart he's so cute I mean who wouldn't want a little tiny mechanical horse trotting around helping them out I can't say enough about this book. I love it so much. I was so excited to see that there is a sequel coming out this year and I cannot wait for it. I think it comes out in August. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. Also, this has an ending to the Cinderella story I've never seen before. And that's all I'm going to say because otherwise I'm afraid that I would spoil it. Um, if you want me to do um, like a full review on this that has spoilers. I would love to talk more about this. Um, just leave a comment down below and I would happily do that because I just could talk about this book all day long. The next book I read was another steampunk. I swear I didn't read all steampunk this week. That was Emily and the Hollow World by Martha Wells. This follows a young girl who has run away from her family. Her mother, when she was very young, ran away and everyone basically said, oh, she ran off to be a prostitute. And her daughter, her uncle and aunt have basically told her, well, your mother ran off and became a prostitute, so you're never gonna amount to much of anything ever. So obviously she runs away because who wants to live with that? And 
she has this plan to go stay with one of her cousins and she's going to help her out while she's in school and try and build a life for herself. <laughs> her attempts totally get hijacked. Like she has this great plan, but she's also very young. Um, and I thought the the author did a really good job of showing us a very young character who's going to make some poor decisions simply because she is young and inexperienced. I mean, she talks about when she leaves home, it takes her two days to get to the village where she was going to sail out from, and she didn't realize that. So, needless to say, she got to town and she was hungry because she didn't bring enough food for her for the trip, so she spent her money to buy passage on a ship. She spent that money on food. And then when she got to buy her ticket, realized she didn't have enough money, and so she had to try and stow away, and that led to sort of all of her problems. Of course, being older reading that, you would think, um, hello, why wouldn't you buy the ticket first, and then whatever money you had left over, that would be for food, or better yet, find out how long it takes to get to this town you're going to get to. I think a lot of times things just sort of work out for characters in these books, and that gets really frustrating to me, so this had a very real feeling to it in that she's making choices, and you're thinking, no, 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 that's, that's not the right thing to do, and she suffers the consequences for it. We stay with this young main character's point of view throughout the whole book. The author did a fantastic job of keeping that voice very consistent, not only in the dialogue, but also in the narration. It was so fascinating to think about the idea that there is a whole world inside the center of the earth. And basically both worlds think the other one's myth mythical or like just a legend or something like people on the surface of the earth. Yeah, there's like these myths and stories that there's a world inside the center of the earth, but they're like, yeah, well, it's kind of a myth. Well, the people and creatures that live in the world in the center of the earth, they have stories about a world that exists on the surface, but they kind of have the same attitude. Like, well, I didn't think it was real, or yeah, that's just a myth, or whatever. So it was interesting seeing the people from the two different worlds sort of interact with each other and how both sort of just assume the others were were made up or make, make believe. A lot of really cool uh, creatures were in the story. Um, we spend most of the time on this airship that also can kind of go underwater which is really cool. So I think this pretty much has all things steampunk in it and it was very fast paced, very, had a very adventuresome tone throughout. Uh, this is the first book in a duology. I do have the second book so I'll probably be reading that next month because I just cannot wait to see what Emily's next adventure takes takes her. Um, I'm pretty sure I gave this one four stars. Then it was graphic novel time. I read volume nine of the unwritten called Fables. The unwritten is probably one of my favorite graphic novel stories I've stumbled across so far. That being said, I haven't read a whole lot. This volume, unfortunately, was a bit of a letdown. I only rated this a three stars. I felt like this volume sort of took a break from the main storyline. And this series has done that before in one of the earlier volumes. I also kind of felt like we, you know, we interrupt your regularly scheduled program for this side story. I'm sure that it has something to do with what's going to take place later on in the story, but it just sort of felt like an intermission, which is weird to say because there's a lot of stuff that happens in here. I mean, there's this big war, pretty much everyone dies. I know people are like, oh gosh, that's a spoiler, but I say that because um, I don't know where this series can go after the end. Um, it just, it wasn't a very satisfying ending for me, I guess. So. While I was happy to return back to some of these characters in the world, it wasn't really what I was hoping for. And I'm so confused now by what we're supposed to expect for the next volume. Because I kind of feel like if we start the next volume and some of the key players are okay, then I'm kind of like, so what was the whole point of this one? If everything was fine, you know? Kind of like, I'm, I'm so afraid that it's going to be like, well, and then he woke up and it was all a dream, which I hate hate when that happens. I don't think that's going to be what happens because the rest of the story has been handled very well and done very, 
in a very sophisticated manner. But I'm I'm so nervous and I was disappointed in this, but at least the graphic novel was short, so I was still able to power through it on my mission to complete my Readorama TBR. Then I read Who Fears Death by Nidhi Okorafor. This book really surprised me. I got the sense it was a little bit of magical realism if you watch my Readorama TBR video. It definitely has that in spades. Our uh, main character, Oni, she's basically a sorceress, but it takes her a while to figure out that's what she is. She's also a shapeshifter, which was really cool. I have read a lot of shapeshifter stories. This definitely had a completely different take on it. The actual act of shapeshifting was described in a way that I haven't seen before, which was really exciting. This all takes place in Africa, in the desert. It's a very, very different uh, culture, environment, setting than what I'm used to reading. So the whole thing just felt incredibly fresh and I can absolutely see why Nidhi Okorafor is as well known as she is in writing circles and why she's so highly praised. This was an amazing story. I gave it a five stars when I really was only hoping for this to be a three star book. I will say, however, though, even though this is magical realism, uh, you could sort of say it's dystopian. Um, not really, though. It deals with some extremely heavy, serious, painful issues. Um, the author herself even mentions in her acknowledgments she's thanking someone who sort of helped her through the really dark periods that she had to write in this book. It, we're talking things like rape, things like um, using rape as a weapon in warfare, things like uh, mutilating female genitalia, uh, serious heavy things. And that's kind of why I say that some people classify this as dystopian, but not really because these things unfortunately are happening and I think this book takes the fantasy medium to shine some light on the fact that some of these things not only have happened but are still happening and just the damage it can wreak over really an entire people. So I'm throwing that warning out there because I don't necessarily think that you should just blindly go into this. You need to know that it does have some very serious heavy themes. That being said, I do believe that they're handled very well. It is not brushed off at all. You see the characters who've suffered from this, how they suffer and struggle to overcome the demons and fears and insecurities that that sort of thing creates. There was also some really good female friendships in here, which I really liked seeing. And they weren't perfect. They definitely had their challenges. But I think it was a good portrayal that not every friendship is perfect, nor should it be. But just because something goes wrong or you have an argument doesn't mean that you should give up on the friendship. So a lot happening in this book. It was so good. I tore through. I read it basically in one sitting. And I mean, it's almost 400 pages. So I was very surprised, happily surprised with this, which was great because it was a it was good to pick up a good book after the graphic novel, which it kind of been wah, wah. So, very, very happy with that one. And then finally was my reread, A Natural History of Dragons and Unicorns by Paul and Karen Jonsgaard. This is a book that sort of acts like a field guide, as if dragons and unicorns actually were real. Who knows? Maybe they are. This was a lot of fun to read. I read it back when I was in college and I was doing a presentation on unicorns. Um, I like that this one sort of talks about you see examples of all the different types of dragons and unicorns and sort of the different areas of the world where those came from. It's a very short, very, I mean, there's there's big margins on the page. It's a very quick read. This was for my short book that was less than 150 pages. It was also fun because I still had some of my notes and annotations in the margins from when I was working on that paper. So that was really fun and exciting to sort of experience and discover as I went through the book and it gave me some ideas for possible ideas I might want to do in the future with 
some of my own writing. So, for those of you keeping track, that was seven books. I read every book on my TBR for the read around. I read seven books in a week, you guys. I don't know that I've ever actually done that before, unless it was like one of those weeks when I was like marathoning a graphic novel series or something. I can't believe it. I've participated in readathons even before I sort of had my own channel and I've made TBRs. I've never read everything that was on the TBR and it wasn't like I took the week off from work. I had to work five days and my job is like over an hour away from where I live. So I feel like that was a huge accomplishment. I was so excited that I actually did it. It definitely was very deliberate though. I can't, I can't say that I just accidentally read everything on my TBR. Um, basically last Sunday and then yesterday, Saturday, I pretty much told myself I had to read at least two books on those days. And yesterday I actually read three books in one day. And then during the week I got up 30 to 45 minutes earlier so I was using some of that time to read before work and then pretty much any time I had any spare moments at all I read like on my breaks at work on my lunch breaks I read even though it felt silly because I was like oh my gosh I only read like five pages but it really does add up over the course of the week I was also very careful not to pick a bunch of really long books and then in the evenings I would read before going to bed, whereas usually I might watch some TV or I might watch some YouTube videos. I really focused on reading. So it taught me that it can be done, but I have to be very deliberate and very intentional with when and where I spend my time. I'm just so excited and so pleased with myself that I accomplished this. If you guys participated in Readorama Round 7, I would love to know how you did. If you posted a video with your wrap up, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to go and take a look. Some of you already have, and I've watched those videos. This was so much fun for me, and I would say I can't wait till the next read of home, but I have some other things I need to get to now, so I don't necessarily know that I will read as much for the second half of June, but this has definitely given a huge boost to the number of books I've read this month. These are all the books that I read for Readorama round seven is seven books. I, I still can hardly believe it, you guys. I've never been able to say that I read seven books in a week. That's like a book a day, even though it wasn't really because some days I doubled up, but I actually did it. And I'm not saying this to make you feel down if you only read one or two books. I mean, even if you read one book in a week, some people don't even read one book in a year. So reading a book in a week when you have everything else going on with work and family and everything else like that I mean be proud of that so please share whatever you did if you participate in Read Rama and you only read one book share that if you only read a hundred pages share that I just I think that we need to celebrate when we make accomplishments because no matter how big or small they are compared to everyone else they're big for you so there you go here's all the books I read thank you so much for watching if you liked what you saw, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please leave any comments down below that you'd like. If you had a video that you posted for Readorama, I love watching them. Leave a link down below and if you haven't already but you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I make new videos. I hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!